Today I will be discussing in detail about the structure of the enamel. Basically, I will be discussing out here about the hypocalcified structures of enamel. Let's go and start with the class. What are the learning objectives of our class? To learn about the structure of enamel and to learn about the hypocalcified structure of enamel. This is the objective for our today's lecture. As we all know, enamel is made up of the structural unit called as enamel rods. This enamel rod or prism are covered by a prism sheet for a broad sheet and the interprismatic substance is said to be present between prisms. These areas are rich in organic matter. In longitudinal section or in the cross section, they market the prisms and they represent secretion of enamel in a time interval. So if I start with the lecture today, that is general introduction about the enamel. What are the structures of enamel come under the category of hypocalcified structures? Just make a note for this, this includes the prisms of the rods, rod sheet, interprismatic substance, cross triations, under shagger bands, incremental lines, neonatal line, surface structure, enamel lamellates, enamel tufts, dentin enamel junction and enamel splinters. This is the list which is included under the hypocalcified structures of enamel. So we will be discussing each and every structure in detail in this lecture. What are enamel lamellates? Enamel lamellae are thin, leaf-like structures that extend from the enamel surface towards the dentino enamel junction. How does enamel lamellae appear? That I will be showing you in the class when I will be discussing slides with you. I will be showing you the same enamel lamellae-like structures under the microscope. There you can appreciate it very well. These lamellae extend for varying depth from the surface of enamel and consist of linear, longitudinally oriented defects filled with the organic material. These enamel lamellates extend to and sometimes penetrate into the dentine. They consist of organic material with but little mineral content. It may arise developmentally due to incomplete maturation of group of prisms. They are the best seen in the transfer section and can be seen in the decalcified section because of protein content. It is formed as a result of local failure of maturation process. These structures may act as a pathway for caries uh, producing bacteria. So, if I tell right now out here, enamel lamellates, how many types of enamel lamellates are there? Enamel lamellates can be of three types, type A, type B and type C. Type A is basically consists of poorly calcified root segment and it is present before the tooth has been erupted. And this enamel lamellate arises from the surface of the enamel but remains restricted to the enamel only, does not penetrate the dentine. Whereas type B and the type C, they reach into the dentine, crossing the dentine or enamel junction. The difference between B and C type is that type B enamel lamellae arises or appears before the eruption of the tooth whereas the type C present after the eruption of the tooth. Type B enamel lamellates are made up of the degenerated cell whereas the type C are a kind of a cracks which are filled with the organic matter for saliva. When I discuss slide with you, I show the difference also between the enamel lamellates and the cracks. Sometimes the enamel lamellates are confused with the cracks. So for that, we have to make a decalcification of the ground section because under ground section, the lamellates vanish off, whereas the cracks persists. Now you all can see out here, this is the presentation, how does the enamel lamellates appear. This is the type A enamel lamellate arising from the surface, reaching towards the dentine enamel junction. This is the type B, you can very well appreciate it out here. The reaching towards the DEJ and somewhat crossing the DEJ. And this is the type C enamel lamellate. Just appreciate it out here. So what is important to know out here? They are rising from the surface of enamel and moving towards the DEJ. This is another picture of enamel lamellae you can see out here. And it is a demineralized section of enamel which is the transversal to show the enamel lamellae. Now coming on to the another hypercalcified structure of enamel that are the enamel tufts. As the name indicates, tufts, they resemble like a tuft of a grass. They are the narrow ripple like structure which arises at DEJ and reaches to the enamel to about one fifth to one third of its thickness. So, it tucks out here on contrary to that of the enamel lamellae, it arises from the DEJ and moving towards the surface. They resemble the tuft of a grass. They extend in the direction of the long axis of crown, so seen abundant in horizontal section than in the longitudinal section. Since it is a hypocalcified structure, so it consists of the hypocalcified enamel rod and the interprismatic substance. Now see out here, how does the enamel uh, tufts appear under the ground section? We, we view the slide of the ground section.
section under the microscope. I think you all can appreciate it out here. This is the DEJ, this is the underlying dating, and this is the enamel. So you can see out here tuft like structure. These are enamel tufts. Just to see out here, there's a glass like structure here. These are enamel lamellates. And see, they are arising from the DEJ and moving in the direction of the surface. I hope it is quite clear. Now, this is the combined picture showing the enamel lamellates and the enamel tuft. See out here. This portion is enamel. This is underlying denti. This is DEJ, that is dentino enamel junction. This is enamel lamellate arising from the surface, moving in a downward direction, crossing the DEJ. So, this portion of the enamel lamellate, which seen crossing the DEJ, is been termed as a dentinal part of lamellate. And these are the tufts, grass like structure. This is the white arrow showing the tuft grass like structure. Yeah, coming on the third uh, hypothalamic structure of the enamel, that are the enamel spindles. Before the formation of the enamel, certain odontoblastic processes they project and get trapped between the adjacent epidoblasts to form the enamel spindles. What happened at the time the odontoblasts? You remember, odontoblasts are the ones which forms the dentin. So the odontoblast crosses the DEJ and they enter into the enamel. They are the resemble a coma shaped structures and they have been termed as the enamel spindles. They are, if they are like this, aligned to the direction of the amino blast and the enamel rods are divergent to that of the amino blast. Therefore, the enamel rods and the spindles are divergent to each other. They do not follow the direction of the enamel rod. Spindles are more prominent in the cuspal region and generally oriented in a direction perpendicular to the DEJ. See this? Can you see out here? These are the enamel spindles. These are the odontoblastic process, this is the DEJ, this is odontoblastic process crossing the DEJ entering into the enamel, uh, this enamel portion. Now here, don't confuse the enamel spindles with the enamel tufts. Tufts are clearly visible like a grass shaped structure, whereas spindle is a single comma shaped structure like out here. Don't confuse, the clear picture I will be showing you under the microscope. When I will be showing you the slide with the ground section, then you will be able to see the much more clear picture. See this now. This is the combined picture of a lamellate tuft and the spindles. See this. This is lamellate. Well, lamellates are quite clear. They see the rising from the surface. See this grass shaped structure. This. this are, these are the tufts. Where are the single structures? The spindle. See out here. Single line, ripple like structures. These are the spindles. So I will be showing the uh, one diagram out here. I will be drawing on the board. How does this resemble? If you have to draw your, if you have to draw the diagram under your manuals by looking at the microscope, so more precisely, how do you draw the diagram? Okay. This is the portion of the enamel I am drawing out here. This is what dentino enamel junction, and this is dentine. Why I am making dentine as a shape? Because dentinal tubules are S shaped structure. I am not focusing out here about the denti because denti we will be studying later on in detail. I will just draw a diagram out here so that a picture will be much more clear for the people. And these are what? These are enamel rods. See this out here enamel rods. While drawing the diagram in your manuals, you have to draw this enamel with a brown color. Why? Because enamel appears brown under the ground section. Because it, its refractive index is matching with that of the color brown. These are enamel rods. Okay? So this is the way you have to draw the diagram in your manuals. So, since these are the hypocalcified structures, what is this if I am drawing out here? This is enamel lamellae. Enamel lamellae type A. This is what? These are enamel spindles, comma shaped structures, which are the odontoblastic process crossing the DEJ entry. And now tell me, what is this? Like a tuft of grass. This is enamel tuft. So it's very much clear. This is enamel tufts, this is enamel lamellae and these are 
enamel spindles i hope you all not be able to confuse you'll not be confusing with the tufts spindles and the laminae it is quite clear with the diagram okay anybody have any confusion okay let's proceed with the lecture so another surface structure of the enamel that is the enamel rod which is a 30 micrometer in thickness that the rod legs more mineralized crystals parallel to each other and perpendicular to the spiral of the ridges now coming on the other surface structure that is a cuticle cuticle is what that is a nismith membrane which is present in a newly erupted tooth and seen in the basal lamina what is a pellicle this is a slightly protein seen in the newly erupted tooth after 2 to 3 days cuticle is like a nismith membrane which is present over the surface of the tooth and the tooth erupts into the oral cavity whereas this membrane ruptures once the tooth is in the oral cavity and this membrane is been replaced by the pellicle which is been seen 2 to 2 to 3 days after the eruption of the tooth now coming next over the dentino enamel junction again and again we are using same word crossing the dej crossing the dej what is dentino enamel junction it is a junction between the dentine and the enamel which is a scallop shape or see out here it is scallop convexity towards the dentine see out here can you all appreciate this scalloping this scalloping and this convexity is towards the dentine just appreciate it out here convexity is towards the dentine and because of this scallop structure there is a firm locking between the enamel and the dentine it's not like that you can easily remove the enamel over the surface of the tooth no they are more pronounced than usual now this is another picture same picture showing the scalloping of the dentine just to so that you all be much more clear about the concept of scalloping now see the another junction one junction is dentino enamel junction now enamel also binds with the cementum right see this is enamel this is cementum so this is been termed as a cemento enamel junction see out here cemento enamel junction which is of three types overlapping touching and gapping this will be discussing in detail in detail now coming on to the another hypocalcified structure that the surface structure seen in the enamel are the pericarpata rod ends cracks in the enamel cuticle what is pericarpata It is a spiral of ridges extends from the DJ to the outer surface of the enamel, where they end in a shallow furrow known as the pericarpata. So basically, they are what? They are the spiral of ridges only, which extends from the DJ. Pericarpata grooves seen as a wave-like concentric surface rings. Pericarpata ridges grooves are separated from each other by ridges. See this? What are pericarpata? They are like the spiral of the ridges only moving towards the surface. See this? These are the spiral of ridges. So these are the moving towards the surface. They are like that only. See over the 20 micrometer thickness of the enamel pericarpium. These are the pericarpium grooves, and these are the ridges out here. This is the picture of electron microscopy. Now what are the enamel cracks? Again, if I go back over the enamel lamellae, sometimes the lamellae are confused with the cracks. If you see the two under the deep, uh, under the ground section. So to differentiate between the lamellae and the crack, we have to decalcify the ground section. Since enamel lamellae are the hypocalcified structures, under after the decalcification, the lamellae disappear, whereas the cracks persist. So they are also like the narrow fissure-like structure seen on almost all surfaces, except for varying distances along the surface at right angle to D E J. That the long cracks are thicker than the shorter ones may reach the occlusion of the incisor ridge. Careful decalcification of a ground section of enamel makes possible the distinction between cracks and lamellae. This I have already explained. The former disappear whereas the later persists. The cracks disappear whereas the lamellae persists. Cracks do not contain the organic material and lamellae has a higher protein content. Since they are the higher protein content, so after the decalcification, what happens? Decalcification line it will remove the calcified material. So since the calcified material has been removed, so the lamellae disappear. Whereas the cracks do not have any organic, they do not have any organic content only. Now see, these are the enamel cracks. See down here. So if you see over the ground section, it's very difficult to differentiate whether these are the cracks or these are the lamellae. To differentiate between both, you have to go for the decalcification. What is enamel cuticle? Enamel cuticle is a dispersed membrane again. It's a secondary enamel cuticle and a pellicle formation. This I have already told. Primary enamel cuticle is been termed as a nismith membrane, which covers the entire crown for newly erupted tooth. 
the thickness of the primary uh, enamel cuticle is 0.2 micrometer. It is removed by mastication, secreted by amyloblast. And the electron microscope it is similar to that of the basal lamina. Secondary enamel cuticles cover the cervical area of the enamel. Thickness is up to 10 micrometer. It is continuous with the cementum, probably of mesodermal origin or may be elaborated by attached to the epithelium. What is pellicle? I think I have told in the beginning only how does it displace membrane differentiate with that of the pellicle? Pellicle is like after 2 to 3 days after the eruption of the tooth. Erupted enamel is normally covered by a pellicle which is apparently a precipitate of slightly protein. Like because the tooth is in the oral cavity, right? It is covered by a surface of a saliva. So that mismatch membrane is been removed, that is a cuticle, whereas the pellicle comes, that is a layer of a or a layer, simple layer of a slightly proteins. It reforms within R after the enamel surface is mechanically cleaned. Within a day or two after the pellicle has been formed, it becomes colonized by the microorganisms to form a bacterial plant. So this much is about the hypocalcified structures of the enamel. So, for a, from the exam point of view, generally a question comes from a hypocalcified structures of enamel. How does the question frame? Discuss hypocalcified structure of enamel. And sometime other than the long question, even a short question come. That is enamel lamellae versus enamel tufts. Tufts, spindles, surface structures of enamel. I hope with this lecture, the concept of hypocalcified structures of enamel is clear to you all and you will be able to attempt the question if they come to your universities. Okay then class. Thank you. If anybody have any confusion, do let me know. Very good morning class. Today we will be discussing about the sections and the ground sections of the enamel. As we have already done in the theory about the structures of the enamel, today I will be discussing about all the structures of the enamel by going through the ground sections under the microscope. We already have done it, learned it theoretically. Today it's time to see the slides on the microscope which will be projected out here. So if we start with the enamel rods. Enamel rods, what are enamel rods? The enamel is predominantly made up of the enamel rods which run obliquely or longitudinally over the surface of the enamel. The first structure for the, for the enamel are the incremental lines of the ridges. All of you just focus and are concentrate out here over my arrow. I hope it is quite clear to see out here these incremental lines. These are being termed as the incremental lines of the ridges. In the longitudinal section, these incremental lines are being seen around the tip of the dentine, as you can see out here, over the tip of the dentine, and in the cervical position, they run obliquely. Let me focus it how it run obliquely. You can see out here, in the cervical portion of the tooth, they run obliquely from BEJ towards the surface of the enamel. I think it is quite clear out here to see the incremental line of the ridge running obliquely. For the same ground section, if we want to view the cross section of it, the incremental lines are seen as a concentric rays as resembling the cross section of the tree. Now what does this incremental line mean? Incremental line means indicating a successive opposition of the deposition of the enamel. The enamel is deposited in the incremental pattern. The mean daily rate of the enamel deposition is 3.5 microns which is increasing from the inner surface towards the outer surface of the tooth and has been decreasing from the incisor or a cuspal tip towards the DEJ. These incremental lines is just the disturbance in the deposition of the enamel which could be a hypomineralized or a hypermineralized structure. I hope the discussion of the view and the view of the incremental line is quite clear out here. These, now we can clearly, clearly see them now as a brown bands. They are the brown bands over the ground section of the enamel. I hope it is clear class, the incremental lines of the radius. Now study about the second structure of the enamel which we have already discussed in the class is been termed as the enamel spindles. I hope it is clear out here, just focus on my arrow. These are the small, small structures you can see out here. These are enamel spindles. See out here. Can you see it here, the enamel spindles? Now, as we have learned it theoretically, what are enamel spindles? These enamel spindles are the odontoblastic process 
which crossing the DEJ and enter into the enamel. They arising from the surface of the DEJ and have a rounded surface or a comma shaped structure, therefore has been termed as the enamel spindles. These enamel spindles corresponds with the direction of the amino blast that is at right angle towards the surface of the dentin. Enamel rods, they are divergent or at an angle to the surface of the amino blast, therefore the enamel spindles and the rods are present at an angle. This is the another hypocalcified structure of the enamel. I hope it is clear out here to see the enamel spindles microscopically. And you can relate it whatever you studied in your theory with the slide. Now, taking a small break and coming on the third structure that is the enamel lamellae. You all can see out here a line which is coming from the surface towards the DEG. This has been termed as the enamel lamellae. Again, I am discussing the same point, telling whatever has been covered in the theory, what is enamel lamellae? Enamel lamellae is a leaf like structure running from the surface towards the dentino enamel junction. These enamel lamellae can be seen in the ground section. Sometimes what happens, these enamel lamellae can be confused with that of the cracks as since ground section has been formed by the grinding of the specimen. So now comes the mind, so now comes the point in the mind. If it can be confused with the cracks, then how can we come in with this is not a crack, it's a lamellae? There is a very nice answer for this. So if we decalcify this particular ground section, there comes the difference between a lamellae and a crack. The crack persists where the lamellae disappears after the decalcification. So this indicates that it is a hypomineralized structure again. Enamel lamellae is one of three types, that is a type A, type B and a type C. Type A enamel lamellae is being made up of a hypomineralized structure and has been remained concise within the surface of the enamel. The type B enamel lamellae is a structure which can cross the dentine, the EJ can appear into the dentine, which is being made up of the surrounding debris. Type C kind of enamel lamellae is a kind of a crack which crosses the DEJ and enters into the enamel and is being made up of a hypocalcified structure of the oral cavity that is a saliva. These are the structures now we can again, I can again show you the presence of enamel lamellae out here. See this? I think you can easily appreciate it out here from the surface towards the DEJ enamel lamellae. Since it remains confined to the DEJ, so it can be a type A enamel lamellae. This is another enamel lamellae. Yeah, if you ask me if ground section can be differentiated between a lamellae and a crack, it is quite tricky. To differentiate between a crack and a lamellae, we have to decalcify the root. What is the meaning of a decalcification? The loss of the mineral content. Decalcification means the loss of the demineralized, the loss of the mineral content. So in this particular ground section, you have seen out here the incremental line of ridges. Quickly view, I am showing you the incremental line of ridges. That is a brown bed. Can you see out here? The presence of the enamel lamellaries and the presence of the enamel spindles out here. I hope it is clear. Presence of the spindles. Very nicely you can see out here spindles, the comma shaped structure coming from the DEJ. Now let's discuss about the another hypocalcified structure of the enamel. That is enamel tufts. Okay, glass, see this. Can you see the enamel tufts? Okay, first of all, tell me, this is enamel. Okay, this is enamel. Definitely, then it is a dentine portion and you can always see out here a DEJ. So, what are the enamel tufts? Tufts, as the name indicates, they resemble a tuft like a grass. Therefore, this name derived, enamel tufts. These enamel tufts, they arise from the DEJ. They do not arise from a single point. It's like a single ribbon-like structure. These enamel tufts, they run from the DEJ towards the surface of the enamel. They cover almost one-third to one-fifth of the portion of the enamel. This is another hypocalcified structure. I think it is quite visible out there and very nicely you can see here. See how many nicely you very nicely can see enamel tufts, a tuft like grass. I hope it is quite clear. And yes, as you can see, again appreciate out here the presence of 
in amyl amylase. So if I ask you what type of an amyl amylase, what type of an amyl amylase it is? This is type A in amyl amylase, running from surface towards the DEJ. And this is going to the hypocalcified structures, hypocalcified products. See there are so many in amyl amylase out here. See this, in amyl amylase. Now you will again ask me now, how will, I, where, how will you differentiate whether there is a crack or an amyl amylase? See, first of all, see this, this is an amyl amylase. It is crossing the DEJ, then it is a type B in amyl amylase. To identify whether it is a crack or it is a lamylase, you have to demineralize this ground section again. But it is a type of an amyl amylase running from the surface and crossing the DEJ, and so you see the dead See this, an amyl amylase. And you can see out here, very nicely appreciated in amyl ducts. Very nice, you can see the ducts out here. See this, another in amyl amylase. I hope this clear to all. In amylase, ducts. And this is a cross section field. So just now we have discussed, if I take a cross section, how does the incremental line of edges appear? They appear as a concentric rings like that of a tree. Very nice ground section it is. Showing very nice presence of the enamel ducts. See this. Oh, very beautiful it is. See this. These are, this is enamel, this is dentine, these are tufts. Just grass like structures. And this is lamellae coming from the surface. See the difference. This is lamellae coming from the surface. This is tough. Arising from the DEJ and going towards the lamellar surface. Covering almost one third to one fifth of the structure of the lamellae. Now, coming to the next structure. Okay, what is the next structure in the lamellae? The new natal lines. Okay, now see out here. The new natal line. Can you see out here this dark brown line in the, in the surface? Enamel. Now, what is new natal line? As we all know, the portion of the enamel has been formed before the birth and after birth. That is the prenatal enamel and the postnatal enamel. The demarcation between a prenatal and a postnatal enamel has been marked by an incremental line, which has been termed as a new natal line or a new natal ring. The prenatally formed enamel is much better than one because it is formed in a much more protected and volatile condition. Since it is the prenatal enamel is been formed in a much more protected and volatile and the nutritional condition since the child or the infant is in the womb. Whereas the postnatal enamel has been shown certain type of the rhythmic alterations out here. So the prenatal enamel is also free from the surfaces parathyroidia. Whereas the postnatal enamel has been shown the presence of the parathyroidia. Very nicely you can see out here the demarcation line. See this. This is a neonatal line or a neonatal ring. What does this neonatal line or a neonatal ring indicate? The demarcation between a prenatal enamel and a postnatal enamel. Here we totally discuss about the structures of the enamel. See this, how does it go? Can you see on here how nicely it is merging? See this, this is a new metal ring. New metal line and a new metal ring. See, one, one thing which I want to discuss about with you all right? In all the ground sections or in a single ground section, you cannot see all the structures. Okay, now we just make this point very clear. To see all the structures of the enamel, it is not possible that you see all the structures or hypocalcified structures of enamel in a single ground section. You can see out here, I cannot appreciate incremental line of edges out here, though the numerator line is very much clear out here. I cannot appreciate the presence of the tufts or the spindles out here, though I can appreciate the presence of the lamellas out here. You can see all three types of lamellae. This is a type A lamellae. This could be type B lamellae crossing the DEJ. This is another type A lamellae. See this. So, to see all the structures of the lamellae, sometimes we have to see whether we have to view many ground sections. I can, I can even demarcate the DEJ also. What is DEJ? Dentino enamel junction. There is a junction between an enamel and a dentine. See this out there. DEJ. Scaloping. I think you can easily view the scaloping out here. Scalor. 
BEJ is quite scalar down here. I hope it is clear by now the structures of the tunnel.